Well, now we're in for another nostalgic interlude as we welcome Ralph Flinger to our microphone. Ralph is better known to most of you as Mr. I Know Where They Are. Now, <laughs> uh, he spent a lifetime tracking down old-time celebrities who are no longer in the spotlight. And Ralph, it's amazing how many of our listeners write in asking your help as they try to locate their favorites as of days gone by. Well, I'm delighted to do whatever I can to help, Ray. You know, sure. I send out more than a hundred birthday cards on the average day to washed-up celebrities who've uh, <laughs> grown a year older. And I know it makes them feel better when I can include a little note that tells them they're still remembered by your listeners. Well, they certainly are remembered, I'm sure, Ralph. This letter I have here is from a woman in Oregon is typical of those uh, that come in addressed to Mr. I Know Where They Are. She says that her girlhood hero was a rich society playboy named Wainbridge Van Cortland. Mm. But uh, she hasn't read anything about him now in the paper for years, and she wonders uh, <laughs> whatever became of him. Oh, goodness sakes alive. Wainbridge Van Cortland. His grandfather made millions selling defective railroad ties back in the 19th <laughs> century when the Iron Horse was first spanning the country. And uh, tying it together into one great nation, you mean? Yes, except on the lines where old man Van Cortland had <laughs> provided the railroad ties. The wood in most of them was infested with termites, so that, that caused the locomotives to tip over before they had a chance to tie this country together into one great nation. I see. I see. But, of course, uh, Wainbridge Van Cortland uh, <coughs> wasn't responsible for any of that. No, no. That swindle of his grandfather's happened long before his time. About the worst thing Wainbridge ever did was ride down Wall Street during the Depression on one of his polo ponies. Uh -oh. <laughs> Several former stockbrokers were kicked as they stood on the sidewalk trying to sell apples. Yeah. But later, Wainbridge gave them each a dollar to show that it was nothing personal. Well, it sounds as if the man was a decent sort of a fellow that any young girl might have worshipped from afar. But uh, where is he now? Well, Wainbridge lost everything during the war, eh? He'd invested the family fortune in buying a South Pacific island, but the <laughs> Japanese managed to sink it some way. I think they just let the air out underneath it and it fell. Anyway, uh -huh. <laughs> Wainbridge now lives in a small furnished room across the street from the bus station in St. Louis. He supports himself by raising goldfish and selling them to his neighbors. Well, that's... Uh... <laughs> That's quite a come down for a millionaire playboy, isn't it? Yes, it is. But at least uh, you've answered the lady's question. Our next letter, addressed to Mr. I Know Where They Are, is from a man in Utah. He remembers a famous rodeo rider of years ago named Tumbleweed Gargan. And he wonders if you happen to know where Tumbleweed is. Well, now. indeed, I do know where Tumbleweed Gargan is. I think he was a hero of every young fellow who grew up in the West, Ray. He used to rope wild bison before that rodeo event was outlawed by most state legislatures. Well, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, where's Tumbleweed now? Well, I don't think they ever officially outlawed bison roping in Montana, but since the event uh, had been dropped from rodeos in other states, it gradually died out there, too. I see. Well, what about Tumbleweed Gargan? A lot of people claim that bison roping <laughs> constituted cruelty to animals. I don't know why. They s still have calf roping in rodeos, and... Calves are similar to bison, except that they're not as woolly. Yeah, I guess that's true. Where is Tumbleweed Gargan now? He's in Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> well, is that all? Yes, as far as I know. Well, I guess that takes care of that. <laughs> I think we have time, looking at the clock here, for one more quick question addressed to Mr. I Know Where They Are. It's from a woman in Virginia, and she's wondering about a former child movie star named... Fat Baby Moxford. She thinks uh, he was a member of the group that called themselves the Little Cut-Ups. Oh, yes. Not people remember that. Not many people do. But Fat Baby Moxford was one of the original Little Cut-Ups. He was later replaced, I believe, by Pinky Luling. <laughs> Studio had to drop Fat Baby around 1927 because he stopped being a baby, even though he did manage to remain fat. Well, <laughs> well that should give the listener who wrote in a lot of good background information. But uh, what she really wanted to know is uh, what became of Fat Baby Marksman. Well, he's now the president of a large corporation in Palo Alto, California that deals in computer software, Ray. <laughs> and I think that's really quite a tribute to his ability. Imagine it's quite difficult for a middle-aged man to get to the top in the business world when his name is Fat Baby Moxford. <laughs> yes. I'm sure he'd have to put forth extra effort to prove that uh, he had what it took particularly in uh, computer software. 
So just uh, let me thank you for answering the lady's question and also those of our other listeners. Oh, I was delighted to do it, Ray. Chatting about all these old people helps keep me young. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Say, friends, have you checked your household fly paper lately <laughs> to make sure it's retaining its full stickum quality? Even the finest brands tend to dry out after hanging indoors for a few years. Hi, this is Bob and Ray reminding you that dry fly paper is a useless weapon in your battle against swarming insects. So replace your old dead fly paper today with Einbinders, the brand you've gradually grown to trust over the course of three generations. 